Well, hi friends, welcome back to Home Group Leaders Notes on Ephesians. We're up to chapter four, halfway through the chapter in this second half of the letter that's really focused on Paul's instruction to this church. Uh, we saw last week how he opened this section by urging this church to, to maintain the unity that's theirs in Christ, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And the, his, the way he described that as flowing out into the life of the church as this new community lives together underneath God's word and the teaching of God's word uh, to build one another up in love. Uh, and there was that great um, combination of truth and love as those defining characteristics of this unity that is ours in Christ. Uh, so we're, we're to be eager to maintain that unity and to pursue it. Uh, so what Paul does now as he keeps going in this letter, he that was sort of a higher level application of the gospel, I guess, looking at the life of the church in that high, on that sort of high level. Now he starts to, if you think about a plane flying at a high level, he starts to sort of get down closer to the ground. He starts to um, look at things in a bit more of a close with a close lens, <laughs> um, and uh, to to especially think through what it looks like now to live in the light of the gospel. What this uh, new life looks like. Um, so uh, there's uh, as always heaps in here. Uh, in terms of a, a, a quick structure, here's how I've broken it up from 17 down to 19. I thought that's really talking about the uh, the old self of these people he's writing to and then 20 this middle section here um, uh, talks about the new self uh, and then the last section all the way from 25 down to the end uh, that's what I've called the new wardrobe which uh, we'll see as we go through this whole, this idea of clothing. Um, so uh, as usual, we won't go through all the details now, but I, what I wanted to do today is uh, think a little bit about that whole, the whole way in which Paul uses this image of clothing in this part uh, and actually just take a step back and think and, and to have a bit of a look at the way in which he uses these images or these metaphors throughout his letter. They've actually been a really important way in which Paul has um, helped us to see and feel and appreciate what it looks what it looks like um, to live in the gospel, to, to see and appreciate the good news of what Jesus has done and who we now are in the light of that. Um, and uh, as you read through Ephesians, I found this really helpful to do. It's actually um, all through this letter, Paul's really used heaps of these metaphors, these images. Uh, a metaphor is like you take a, an example from everyday life and you put it, you match it up with the thing you're talking about, and you say um, that this thing that I'm talking about, that um, I'm trying to describe to you, it, it's like this other thing that you know already from your experience. And so Paul's talking about this new life in Christ, what it means to be united to Christ. Um, and the, the main image he's used, he uses through Ephesians is this whole image of the body, um, this beautiful organic unity that also has this amazing diversity. If you think about your body, it's so diverse in all its parts, but it's all one and it all comes under the one head. And uh, Paul uses that image, that metaphor, to describe the reality of who we now are through the gospel in Christ. So you can see a whole stack of different references there uh, about about that. He's, he's used this um, metaphor or image of the temple and or a building. We saw that back in chapter two. Um, uh, they would have the, been fam really familiar with this idea of the temple, and uh, Paul says that that's actually now. A, a really beautiful, powerful way of understanding what's going on in the church, in this new community. You are the, the new temple, the true temple, the one that the reality that the first temple was always pointing towards. Uh, later in the letter, he's going to use this image of marriage to describe the relationship between Christ and the church. And that's a, a really, that's um, really rich and deep and mind-blowing 
um, uh, the way in which he does that. And you see that again throughout throughout the Bible. Um, but this new clothing metaphor or image is really comes into focus in these verses. Uh, you'll see he, he does um, mention it again later on when he talks about putting on the armour of God. Uh, but this is one of Paul's, like he comes back to it sort of again and again in his letters. And you can see uh, other uses down here. Um, and if you'd like, you can chase those up. Um, but this whole idea of clothing, a, a set of clothes, is this metaphor that Paul now uses when, he, when he's in this second half of his letter talking about his instruction to this church. He uses this metaphor, this image of a new set of clothes. And... Um, I think it's it's just brilliant and really uh, he, he wants our imagination to be gripped by this, I think. Um, that's one of the beautiful and really powerful ways in which imagery and metaphor uh, is um, sort of uh, uh, is used in the Bible. It helps us to, uh, to grasp on a deeper way, to even feel on a deeper way what what's being talked about. Uh, and I think I think it's such a great image that Paul uses here when he's, as I said, switched to this second half of his letter. The other images you notice they all have a real sense of permanence to them. Of um, so you know if you when you put your faith in Christ, it's um, it's like you you are being united to his. You, you're, you're entering his body. You're now part of his body. Uh, that's connected to him, the head, and that's all been done. It's all it, it is done. You, you have this new identity in Christ. I think the brilliant thing about this clothing metaphor is it builds off that, and it builds off the other m images that Paul uses, which are much more focused on the completed work of God in Christ, what He has accomplished, and what is already ours now. Uh, that we don't earn, we don't work for, that's just a gift. It's all freely given in the gospel. And that's the first half of this letter, all dominated by that glorious reality that this is all God's work <laughs> and we just receive it by faith. It's his grace, not our works. Uh, but when he then turns to this second half of the letter to talk about what, how then do we live in the light of this, I think this clothing imagery is just really powerful uh, it's it's powerful because um, it has it acknowledges that there's a sense in which our response to this um, it, it's a response that uh, is um, it is new every morning if I could use that, that phrase it's it's a response that needs attention every day you wake up in the morning and you put on a set of clothes and Paul wants us to uh, to say, what set of clothing am I putting on today? Um, so there's this ongoing sense of our responsibility here. And it ties into the whole question of the mystery between God's sovereignty and our responsibility that we've mentioned before. Um, but that is in the background here, I think. Um, that we have this responsibility to, um, to 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 live in the light of this gospel in this way. And well, what is that? What does that look like? Well, Paul talks about it here in this wonderful metaphor of putting off that that old set of clothing that belonged to your old life, and putting on the new set of clothing that belongs to your new life. You are already new. You are already made new in Christ. You have a new identity. The old is gone, the new has come, and yet uh, you've still got all your your crusty old clothing in the in the drawers, <laughs> and Paul wants you to throw them out, and and put on the new wardrobe that is given to you in the gospel. Um, the other way I think this metaphor really helps us is that it talks, it it, it speaks to a way of thinking about the how we live, what people. Um, uh, sometimes called ethics, how we live. Uh, it it's it's much more. I'm um, talking about what people, what we don't talk about much now, but has been a really um, important theme in the whole idea of ethics, which is the whole question of virtues. Virtues. Um, a virtue is a, a settled habit. Uh, 
um, a, a long-term disposition, a, a, ch a change of your character. Um, and the opposite of it is, is a vice, um, virtues and vices. And you notice as you go through that Paul's not giving these ex these um, kind of um, uh, these checklists to go through. He's not. It's not as if he's saying, uh, right now you can say, right, I haven't lied today, so tick that off. Um, didn't steal today, and I went online and donated some money to charity, so tick. That's uh, my sharing for the week. Um, you know, he's, that's not at all what I, I don't think that's the picture that Paul's painting here he's trying he's using this imagery and these um, examples to describe a whole new way of being a whole new type of person he's, he's talking about virtues about what maybe in the Bible we call the heart a changed heart in the light of the gospel that's so much deeper than the end of the, than just the actions that you do um, the actions that you do are important, but they flow out of the heart. They flow. They flow out of your. They show what's in the heart. Um, and what Paul is describing here is these um, these settled habits or dispositions or, or this this character. Um, yeah, I find that helpful to just think through that um, what God is doing in me is not just giving me a new checklist. He's giving me a whole new set of clothing to wear. Uh, and I think part of the way in which we're, I'm meant to understand that imagery is that it's sort of this, as I, as, I put, as I increasingly put on this new wardrobe, it's going to shape me more and more and change, change, give me more of this virtuous life. Um, slowly, way too slow, <laughs> uh, because my old clothes cling so tightly, you know, uh, and... Um, my um, old habits are hard to break. Um, but God does want us to, um, every morning, keep putting off the old, putting on the new. That's what he goes on to here. Um, uh, okay, um, what I wanted to just point out quickly was to notice here the way in which he, he, he matches both of those. It's both a putting off and a putting on. So sometimes as Christians, we can just focus on the putting off. So put off falsehood. Don't lie. Um, uh, don't um, don't um, sort of hold on to your anger. Um, don't steal. Steal no longer. Um, uh, don't talk dirty. Don't talk unwholesome talk, etc., um, etc. Et Get rid of all those things. Um, and... and those are true and right and necessary. <laughs> but you notice that Paul matches them with... He doesn't just say put off, take off the old clothing. He, he gives this wonderful, beautiful, um, incredible new set of clothes to put on. Um, it's not just a taking off. It's also a putting on. Sometimes, on the other hand, we can just focus on the putting on. And we can say, yes, speak truthfully. Um, uh, uh, work usefully. Um, build up others, um, etc., etc. Uh, but we never talk about the putting off. Um, so we we just kind of in, in using this metaphor, we're just putting on these sort of new clothes over the top of the old ones. But that's not the picture here either. Um, Paul has both in mind: both um, repenting of sin, putting it off every, every day. It's a work that it's you know, a thing that we we um, are called to every day as well as this conscious putting on of these new things, these new habits, this new way of life in Christ. Uh, okay, so that was one thing. Um, he pairs both of them, which I think is really helpful to notice. Uh, and uh, the other, just last thing I wanted to point out was, I just found this, um, yeah, it's so, uh, so rich actually. So he pictures, and the outcome of that is, a total reversal, and I think you see that really strongly in verse 28, where you've got a thief who's stealing, um, presumably self-centered or maybe um, just um, fear-driven. Um, and Paul knows that this is going on in the community. He's saying, don't steal any longer. Um, but do you notice, and this is where this virtue stuff comes out, do you notice there's a total change of character here? So um, this, it's not just don't steal, but do something useful with your hands. 
um, uh, good, useful work is um, a part is the way God made us to be, and a beautiful new set of clothes to put on. But also, um, the 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 reason that they are to do something useful is that they may then have something to share with those in need. So he pictures in this one verse, he's pictured this complete transformation of a life from us from a, a fearful, self-centered thief to a hardworking, generous spirit who is looking for opportunities to give to those in need. Um, and that's where this, you know, it's it's much more than just a set of things you can tick off. It's, it's a whole transformed life in the light of the gospel. Uh, and Paul wants us to consciously pursue these virtues, to, to put them on, to wake up in the morning and think, okay, what am I going to put off today? And what am I going to put on? And uh, he's given us a wonderful list to start with. And I just lastly notice here, it's all anchored in the gospel, in what God has done for us in Christ. That's where he finishes the chapter here. All right, um, heaps more to think about there. I've got some quotes from John Stott as usual. I'll leave you to read those um, as you're able, but let me pray. Our God, we thank you so much for making us new in Christ, for giving us new life through the resurrection, bringing us into this new family in the church. And we ask your help, please, Lord, that we might put off these old things and put on the new. Um, we pray that you'll... Uh, help us to put off falsehood and to speak truthfully to one another, uh, to not hold on to anger and bitterness and rage and um, uh, violence, slander, malice, um, unwholesome talk, um, self-centered stealing, anything of the uh, you know put to put all those things that belong to our old self off. And help us, Lord, to put on these virtues of the gospel, to, to speak truthfully, to work hard and be generous, to build others up according to their needs. Uh, we ask that we might not grieve your Holy Spirit who is doing this within us. And Lord, we, we know that we need your Spirit in order for this to happen. So we ask, please, that you might in each of our lives do this more and more. Uh, pray that tomorrow when we wake up, we might consciously put off and put on these things. And we pray that so that your church will be built up and your name glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.